Good morning, and welcome to Providence Park Baptist Church. Our call to worship, scripture for the morning, comes from 1 Kings chapter 19, verses 9 through 18, the New International Version. There he went into a cave and spent the night. And the word of the Lord came to him. What are you doing here, Elijah? He replied, I've been very zealous for the Lord God Almighty. The Israelites have rejected your covenant, torn down your altars, and put your prophets to death with the sword. I am the only one left, and now they are trying to kill me too. The Lord said, Go out and stand on the mountain in the presence of the Lord, for the Lord is about to pass by. Then a great and powerful wind tore the mountains apart and shattered the rocks before the Lord, but the Lord was not in the wind. After the wind, there was an earthquake, but the Lord was not in the earthquake. After the earthquake came a fire but the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire came a gentle whisper. When Elijah heard it, he pulled his cloak over his face and went out and stood at the mouth of the cave. Then a voice said to him, What are you doing here, Elijah? He replied, I've been very zealous for the Lord God Almighty. The Israelites have rejected your covenant, torn down your altars, and put your prophets to death with the sword. I am the only one left, and now they are trying to kill me too. The Lord said to him, Go back the way you came, and go to the desert of Damascus. When you get there, anoint Hazel, king over Aram. Also, anoint Jehu, son of Nemeshi, king over Israel, and anoint Elisha, son of Shaphat, from Abel Mahola, to succeed as prophet. Jehu will put to death any who escape the sword of Hazel, and Elisha will put to death any who escape the sword of Jehu. Yet I reserve 7,000 in Israel, all whose knees have not bowed down to Baal and whose mouths have not kissed him. And our scripture for the morning has come from 1 Kings chapter 19, verses 9 through 18, and I've read the New International Version. Let us pray. Dear Father, in our haste and busyness, we come because we need you. On this day of worship, we say thank you for keeping us through and in spite of. On this day of worship, we ask for calmness in our spirits, resolve in our thoughts, forgiveness of our sins and redemption. On this day of worship, Thank you, Holy Father, for we are blessed. On this day of worship, may your word ever penetrate our hearts that we may strive to live for you each day. Hear our prayer, O Lord. Hear our prayer, O Lord. Incline our hearts to thee and grant us thy peace. This is our prayer as we worship you this day. In the name of our Father. Amen. We need to hear from you. We need a word from you. If we don't hear from you, what will we do? Wanting you more each day, 
show us your perfect way. There is no other way that we can be. Destruction is now, is now in view. Seems the world has forgotten, has forgotten all about you. Children are crying, people are dying. They're lost without you, so lost without you. But you said if we seek, we seek, Lord, your face and turn from our wicked, our wicked ways. You promise to heal our land, Father, you can. All we need to hear from you. We need a word from you. If we don't hear from you, what will we do? What will we do? Wanting you more each day. Show us your perfect way. There is no other way that we can live. There is no other way. There is no other Good morning, Providence Park. Welcome again as we just share together on this Sunday. We thank you for your diligence and just for your love and commitment as we labor together in kingdom business. Certainly, you know about our call in prayer on Wednesday and even our listen only service on Sunday. And certainly, if you're watching, you know about the numbers. And so they're all available to you. I want to just push this number. This is for COVID booster appointments. We receive this number as 1-877-275-8343. So that's for COVID booster appointments. We receive this number 1-877-275-8343. And so we just thank our health ministry personnel who are attending to things, watching the numbers, and also just trying to keep us safe. We thank you for doing your best, and we encourage you now to be diligent, to be diligent. Several things. We want you to continue to, to protect yourselves, uh, certainly the hand washing and the mask you know, as you're moving in and out. Um, also, if you haven't gotten your booster, be sure to make that number and call. And if you have some preconditions, things of the sort, check with your uh, health care provider for those directions so that you can be squared away with that. Also, elections. In a couple of weeks, really, in about one week, we're going to vote. And so be sure now to be informed so that you can make a proper decision. Uh, there's advertisements all across the way, and they always sometimes are much slinging, but we want to look at the economic effects, the impact of the decisions that are made. So please be diligent and ready and get to vote. If you have not, I usually vote on election day, so I just go out and see. But some may have done it already, but please, please do that for those who have not. Have some more good news. I waited to share this, and so I'm just happy. I knew it was coming and it was in, in the makings already. So I am certainly delighted that another one of our, um, really, this one has continued to excel in God's grace and goodness. Uh, Dr. Patrice Perkins is now a professor at Hampton University, and so in the psychology department there. 
I know she was moving there over the summer, and so I just waited. And so I think she's all settled in and doing well. And I shared with her, we're just so proud of her. And so we're just grateful just to share good news. Saw one of the members this past week, and it was just great seeing her. It was Miss Myra Lewis, and just just happy to see you and just to share and know that you're doing well. And so any, you can call me at any time for good news. And so I am grateful. I'll celebrate with you. I'll celebrate for you. And so I'm just grateful just to hear good news. And so let's be prayerful. Let's be persistent, abounding in the goodness of God and giving God the glory. Let's just pause in prayer. Dear Lord, we ask your grace and your kindness to continue upon us. Thank you for being so loving and so kind, oh God. Thank you for keeping us even in spite of ourselves. There are those who are under the doctor's care, Lord, and we pray that you grant them the peace that passeth all understanding, that they may be strengthened, dear Lord, that they may be confident in your care and your love. We pray, God, for doctors and nurses in the health professions, O oh Lord, that they may be instruments of your healing care and your touch. But we pray ever again and again, God, that you move where we cannot move, that you touch what we cannot touch, fix what we cannot fix, and provide the healing that only your hands can provide. Thank you, dear Lord, for our congregation as we are scattered about in our homes, as we videoly watch, uh, virtually watch, oh God, share together on, on phone calls and prayer, we pray that you bless us, that we may do what we can to the glory and honor of your name. Thank you, dear Lord, for those who continue to give, to continue to participate, our media ministry, our music ministry, our diaconate, dear Lord, other officers who are laboring and working during this COVID time. We pray, God, that you get the glory by all that we do in the name of Jesus. Amen. I have plummeted through the Bible years and years and years, and so um, I was just sharing with some friends that uh, I probably have done a lesson on every book of the Bible, and so it's just fun just to share and look. And so here's a little ditty from 1 Kings, that 19th chapter, verses 9 through 18, but the key verse is 14, and the thought is how the Lord speaks. Zalius Elijah became weary in his ministry. The conquest of the prophets of Baal, that was temporary. As you see that in chapter 18. Ahab, we call him Ahab, the king of Israel, sought his life. And Elijah did not achieve the victory he desired. When he resigned to defeat or death, the Lord spoke to him. Hear my pithy translation as I wrestle with the text. In verse 9, And then he came to a cave and lodged there. And behold, the word of the Lord came to him. And he said to him, What are you doing here, Elijah? And he says, I've been very jealous for the Lord, the God of hosts, for the people of Israel have forsaken thy covenant, thrown down thy altars, and slain thy prophets with the sword. And I, even I only, am left. And they seek my life to take it away. And he said, go forth and stand upon the mountain before the Lord. And behold, the Lord passed by, and a great and strong wind rent the mountains, and broke in pieces the rocks before the Lord, but the Lord was not in the wind. And after the wind, an earthquake, but the Lord was not in the earthquake. And after the earthquake, a fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire, this is a revised stanza. It says, a still, small voice. And when Elijah heard it, he wrapped his face in his mantle and went out and stood at the entrance of the cave. And behold, there came a voice to him, and he said, and said, what are you doing here, Elijah? And the Lord said to him, go, return on your way to the wilderness of Damascus. And when you arrive, you shall anoint these, some names are kind of tricky, so hear the Hebrew pronunciation. Anoint Hazael to be king over Syria, and Yehu, the son of Nimshi, you shall anoint to be king over Israel, and Elisha, or Elisha, the son of Shaphat, of Abel Meholah, you shall anoint to be prophet in your place. And him who escapes from the sword of Hazael shall Yehu slay, and him who escapes from the sword of Yehu shall Elisha slay. Yet I will leave 7,000 in Israel. All the knees that have not bowed to Baal, and every mouth that has not kissed him. 
Notice that the Lord spoke to Elijah through a voice of silence, a fine whisper. The Lord speaks in an invasive and intuitive utterance that inspires action. It says in verse 11 through 12, he said, go forth, stand upon the mount before the Lord. And behold, the Lord passed by, and a great and strong wind rent the mountains and broke in pieces the rocks before the Lord but the Lord was not in the wind. And after the wind, an earthquake, but the Lord was not in the earthquake. And after the earthquake, a fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire, still small voice. If we are deaf to the Lord, we do not know how the Lord speaks to us, and our lives are meaningless. Elijah's example compels us to heart search by the Spirit. This means let the intuitive impulse toward the good guide our thinking and our acting. If we would live healthy and holy, develop sensitivity to the presence. No one ever told me. I never heard a thorough explanation. I've soul searched for over 50 years to know the Lord, and through study and devotion, I've gained a sense of how the Lord speaks. I'm just going to focus on that one verse. And after the earthquake, a fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. And after a fire, a still, small voice. First, the Lord speaks in a personal way. There's a sense of being addressed. Elijah felt addressed by the invisible entity who questioned his posture. What are you doing here? This question presupposes that Elijah is not where he should be and not doing what he should. This voice of silence or fine whisper, I, I call it the voice of conscience. The words of a question surface within Elijah, prompting his consideration of the lack of fulfillment of his duties or responsibilities. What are you doing here? Though these words may have surfaced from within, they originated from outside Elijah with the presence who screams in silence and frightens you into consideration of his will. The Lord speaks in an understandable way. I'm just focusing on that one voice. And he says in verses 15 through 17, the Lord told him, go return on your way to the wilderness of Damascus. And when you arrive, you shall anoint Hazael to be king over Syria. And Yehud, the son of Nimshi, you shall anoint to be king over Israel. And Elisha, the son of of Shaphat, of Abel, and Mahola, you shall anoint to be prophet in your place. Him who escapes from the sword of Hazael shall Yehu slay, and him who escapes from the sword of Yehu shall Elisha, really, this name, his Elisha, shall slay. Second, the Lord speaks in a powerful way. There's a sense of being authorized. Elijah felt authorized by the invisible presence. What are you doing here? The answer to this question is nothing, just dying. This voice of silence, fine whisper, voice of conscience, challenges and charges Elijah to do that which is constructive for that hour. The way that Ahab is to be defeated is by foreign kings at the disposal of the Lord. The Lord plans to use humans as his instruments to punish other humans who are to be holy to him. Elijah has the task of initiating this action, even appointing his successor. Here the word of the Lord critiques, challenges, charges, chastises its recipient and bearer. Here the prophet is propelled, instructed, commissioned to initiate the process by which those whom the Lord will deliver can be delivered at Elijah's own expense. Fulfilling the word of the Lord will now lead to his replacement or removal from office. The Lord speaks and thereby makes things happen. In verse 18, he says, Yet I will leave 7,000 in Israel, all the knees that have not bowed to Baal, and every mouth that has not kissed him. Third, the Lord speaks in a promising way. There's a sense of being assured. Elijah felt assured by this invisible presence. Now, arrogantly or ignorantly, Elijah claimed to be the last survivor in the service of the Lord. So the Lord conveyed to him that there are countless others who serve the Lord and that Elijah need not worry or become self-inflated. The Lord always has others 
who do and can do his will. There are no prima donnas in the kingdom of the Lord. The Lord calls and raises up servants in every time, place, or generation. Elijah really is put in his place by the divine speech. All of this is through the word of the Lord, the materialization of his will, the realization of his way, the manifestation of his word. Elijah gained a sense of confidence or certainty in the Lord in spite of his perceptions or perceived dilemma. You see, the Lord speaks and manifests meaning beyond the moment. And so through this whole scenario, he goes in the cave. The Lord says, what are you doing here, Elijah? And he says, oh, I, 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 I. He says, well, get on out there and wait and see. And the Lord passed by, but he wasn't in this, wasn't in that. And then this still, small voice. And then he asked him again. What are you doing here? The Lord confronts, commands, and comforts by his word. Now, those who are deaf to the Lord are frequently friendless, frustrated, and futile. When you do not hear the Lord, you experience an excruciating, piercing loneliness that no one can feel. You see, you don't twit or tweet crap at 3 a.m. in the morning if you hear the Lord. Your life is not empty of purpose, void of meaning, bereft of good goals, if you hear the Lord. You're not overwhelmed by circumstances, stalemated by misfortunes, even stopped by molehills, if you hear the Lord. Many economically prosperous, politically powerful, and socially successful persons have crummy, low-quality, immoral lives because they are insensitive, unaware of, unresponsive, unreceptive, inhospitable, just dumb to the Lord. The corrupt, mean, and downright murderous acts that occur daily are clear indications of folks who are deaf to the Lord. They have no help, no purpose, no certainty of their souls. When I was in Virginia Beach, the principal at Larimore Elementary School heard the Lord command her to promote multi-ethnicity by having all the children sing, lift every voice and sing, in spite of opposition from the administration. And she was comforted by the letter of a fourth grader who wrote, I believe in you. The Lord has heard through reflection, reason, and reliance on him. It says this in Deuteronomy, we talked about it the other week. He said, this commandment which I'm commanding you this day is not difficult for you or beyond your grasp. It's not in the heavens that someone should say, who will go up to the heavens for us and get it for us that we may hear it and do it? It is not across the sea that someone should say, who will cross the sea for us and get it for us so that we may hear it and do it? But the word is actually near you. It is in your mouth and in your heart so that you can do it. So, heart search by the Spirit. Let the impulse toward the good guide your thinking and acting. I mean, listen for the Lord. Meditate on his will as you understand it. In all your undertakings, acknowledge him, and he will accordingly straighten out your path. Also learn, study the sacred text. You can't know how the Lord speaks and yes, you are familiar with the human record of it. It says, this is in Second Timothy, all scripture is inspired by God, profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction, and for training in righteousness, so that the person of God may be complete, equipped for every good work. Third, lean on the Lord. Trust him. It says in Proverbs 30, every saying of God, as I translated, is handcrafted. He is a shield for those taking refuge in him. The Lord does speak to us. However, many times we are noisy and don't hear him. To hear him, you must listen. To listen, you must learn. To learn, you must study. To study, you must lean. To lean, you must trust. Make it your aim to practice quietness before the Lord. Make it a habit to compose yourself daily before the Lord. Meditation on his will is achieved through study of the sacred text, which facilitates trusting the Lord. It says this in, in Psalm 19, the law of the Lord is perfect, 
reviving the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. The precepts of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandment of the Lord is pure, enlightening the eyes. The fear of the Lord is clean, enduring forever. The ordinances of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. More to be desired are there than gold, even much fine gold. Sweeter also than honey in the drippings of the honeycomb. It says, moreover by them is thy servant warned, and in keeping them there is great reward. The Lord speaks and produces conscientious living. The Lord speaks and produces conscientious living. When you hear the Lord, you move. You get up and do something. You act like you have the sense that he gave you. It says, after the earthquake, a fire. Lord was not in the fire, but after the fire, the still small voice. And when Elijah heard it, he wrapped his face in his mantle and went out and stood at the entrance of the cave. And behold, there came a voice to him and said, what are you doing here? This question is crucial. For if you hear the Lord, you do something for his sake. The Lord I had to craft a, a, a phrase. The Lord's speech creates. I had to craft and put some words. The Lord's speech creates. He commands things to be. He exalts things into existence. He speaks materials into happening. Since he has not created humans robots, since he has given us freedom, when we hear the Lord, we must decide to act like it. We must glorify him by working in his vineyard. You see, when those who are obedient hear the Lord, they do something positive, constructive, relevant, life-promoting. And if you don't hear the Lord, if you don't know how the Lord speaks, just be attentive, be alert, watch, tarry for the Lord. Turn to the Lord, focus your attention upon him, forsake ulterior motives and self-promoting concerns, and dare to hear him through study, meditation, and prayer. The book informs me now that a believing Gentile who understood the way of authority asked the presence for a word. He got himself ready to hear. He submitted ahead of time to what the presence would say. It says in Matthew, he, as Jesus entered Capernaum, a centurion came forward to him, beseeching him and saying, Lord, my servant is lying paralyzed at home in terrible distress. And he said to him, I will come and heal him, Jesus said. But the centurion asked him, Lord, I'm not worried that they have you to come under my roof, but only say the word and my servant will be healed. And that's what Jesus did. And the centurion heard it. And Jesus told him, go, be it done for you as you have believed. Lord, we're not all of that in a bag of chips. Speak, Lord. We are COVID contaminated and need a cosmic cleansing. Speak, Lord. Our culture is power drunk, position obsessed, politically tainted. Speak, Lord. Our society is redlined with sin, high on self-righteousness and incarcerated in wickedness. Speak, Lord. Lord, we need a tune-up that only you can provide. Speak, Lord. Now hear the word of the Lord. The Lord says, behold, I created the metal worker who blows upon the coals in the fire and produces an instrument for his work. And I created the destroyer to demolish. But he says, no weapon that is formed against you shall prosper. And every tongue that shall rise against you in judgment, you shall condemn. This is the heritage, the heritage of the servants of the Lord. The reward of their righteousness, he says, appointed by me, says the Lord. He says in Deuteronomy now, if you obey the voice of the Lord your God, being careful to do all the commandments which I command you this day, the Lord your God will set you high above all the nations of the earth, and all these blessings shall come upon you and overtake you if you obey the voice of the Lord your God. It says, blessed shall you be in the city, blessed shall you be in the field, blessed shall be the fruit of your body and the fruit of your ground and the fruit of your beasts, the increase of your cattle and the young of your flock. Blessed shall be your basket and your kneading trough. Blessed shall you be when you come in, and blessed shall you be when you go out. The Lord shall keep you from all evil. He will keep your lives. He'll keep your going out and your coming in from this time forth, even forevermore. Now may the Lord bless you 
and so keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you such that he is gracious to you. May the Lord lift up his face upon you and bestow his peace upon you even now until eternity. Amen. The doors of the capital C church are open. We trust, we trust that you heard a word from the Lord, his summons, his command, his beckoning call to be whom he has created you to be. So the doors of the capital C church are open. The arms of Providence Park, we ever welcome you. If you wish to join us, you can call us. Our number is 804-329-1963. You may join us as a candidate for baptism by letter or by Christian experience. But the doors of the capital Z church are open, and we extend our arms to you, along with the countless congregations around the world. The Lord wants you. The Lord needs you. Please open your ears. Position yourself to hear from him. Let us just bow in prayer. Oh, Lord our God, we thank thee for the abundance of thy love that spares us to enjoy each day. We praise thy name that thou dost continually keep us by thy covenant faithfulness. Ever touch us, Lord, with the hands of mercy, that we may be mindful of the uncontrollable, the undeserved, the unearned goodness that fills our lives. Ever breathe upon us that breath of power, that we may be encouraged to be righteous, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with thee. Ever show us, Lord, thy way of truth, that we may be practitioners of the gospel that is preached, and ever lead us in thy way of love, that we may be promoters of the providence that thou dost continually provide this people in this place. We pray in the name of our Master, Jesus of Nazareth. Amen. I give you my charge as we leave you now. Heart search by the Spirit. Sacrifice self. Abide in Christ. Learn wisdom. Grow by the word. Preach the truth. Have mercy. Forgive 70 times 7. Stand with hope. Travel by prayer. Walk by faith. And live by grace. We bless you now on this Lord's Day that God may continue to keep you and bless you and continue his favor upon you. We pray in the name of our master. Amen. God bless you. We hope to again see you next Sunday. God's speed be to you. God bless you. Thank you.